All right. Now we have covered uh, the reporting that we have inside the tool, but what if there are some reports that you want to customize all by yourself? So for that, we have the Qmetry Insights where we can basically have two options. The first one is the visual reports and the second one is the advanced query report. So if you have an SQL query that you can basically write down, then you can just have the SQL query pasted inside this option that we have and then just click on fetch filters and done. Now I have created a, a filter over here uh, where it says that I have to select the different project IDs. That's the reason why I get this filter. So we have a whole documentation on this where you can basically have your own filters and then we get the option of uh, creating gadgets which will have these filters. So let me just go ahead and select uh, all the projects and basically quickly run the query. So here you can see I have the, the output. Now the option we have over here is to change the view. So we have the options of column, bar, line, area, pie, donut, cross table, scatter plot, as well as the gauge. Now let me go ahead and select column. Here you can see the data has changed and it has given us the output in the form of column. Now let me go ahead and select the pie chart. So here you can see it has given us the output in the form of pie chart. So the second thing that you would basically do is just click on add gadget. So if I click on add gadget, you will basically name uh, this particular report that we created a gadget name. This gadget name uh, will then be used in dashboards while we create dashboards. So let me just give this uh, name as Lexcom gadget and save it. Now let's go ahead and uh, create another gadget by selecting visual reports. So let me just go try and uh, go ahead, create uh, one of the build reports that I'm thinking I'm able to think of right now. So let's create a build report. Now from the build, so I would basically need a summary, a suit summary. So let me just go ahead and select a suit summary. Here it has gone ahead and given me the table. Now I want this in the form of column. So let me just go ahead and regenerate it. Now here you see I have the cross table data that I can populate as well as the X axis. Now let me go ahead and select the X axis, but before that, let me just try to do a group by over here because we don't want duplicate values. Regenerate the columns, all right. Now, the second thing would be to get the count of the test case execution statuses. Let's regenerate the columns and then just do this in the form of count. So we have this option of the mathematical options like selecting, listing, doing a count. We have group by, then we have also sort in ascending or descending order. Let's do it by count and to generate the columns. Here you can see we are able to see some data. Now in the cross tab, let me just go ahead and select because I want it to be able to do it in the column form and bifurcate it. I'll just have a cross tab and select the same test case execution statuses and do a group by. And here you'll be able to see that it generates a very beautiful graph. Here you can see it is able to uh, distinguish the failed, not run, pass, and block right over here. Now I want to just search for or apply a filter. So I'll just go ahead and apply a filter. Now I have to check for the builds and I know that my summary contains hash in the form of build numbers. I'll go ahead and click on apply, close, and regenerate the columns. So here you can see it has gone ahead and selected all all of the builds that have a hash in it. So it shows the build progression of how the build has progressed basically. Now, if I go ahead and select all the different projects, or well, let me just go ahead and select just one, two of them. And regenerate column. You can see I was able to create uh, how the build progresses, a, a, a report basically showing us how does a build progress as it goes out. So here you can see the build 262, it has one fail and two passed. And if there's any code change that happens and we run the build again, we can basically see that the status changes that have been going on with that particular automation build. All right, now let's go ahead and create a gadget. Now I'll go ahead and create a dashboard. So from the dashboard, all I have to do is just go to Qmetry custom dashboards, click on new and give some name. And then 
go to my gadgets and select those two gadgets that we had created. So if you can see in the back end, the two reports that we generated, they have been selected and have been uh, imported inside the dashboard. I want to add the system gadgets. So here in the system gadgets, all the inbuilt reports, we also have gadgets uh, which are called as system gadgets. And we can basically search for all the gadgets which are related to issue, such as issue summary, issue count by status and priority, issue velocity with respect to test cases, issue compared to the requirements. I've added them to this particular dashboard and you can basically see all the dashboards have been populated inside. All the gadgets have been populated inside this dashboard. And we can apply filters and everything, all the good stuff from the reporting's perspective, which makes this very flexible. So yes, this is all, that is it from the reporting's perspective. Uh, you can create uh, a number of reports. You can share those reports. You can have it in the home of the PDF. You can schedule them. We can have it embedded inside our websites by generating an embedded URL. So that is it from uh, the reporting's perspective. It's very easy to generate reports and the reports can obviously be customized as per your requirements.